Welcome back to the channel guys. It is me 80 summer full four. So today guys I want to do a review. Sorry it took so long guys I just came got back from work and you know like I said guys I wanted to do a proper review of the game So we're gonna go ahead and break this game down This will be a long video guys probably around 15 minutes because I have a lot to elaborate upon this game You know so like I said guys hit make sure guys hit that like button hit the subscribe button as well Comment down below your thoughts comment section below if you're watching the replay I'm mean, sorry on the comment down below if you're um comment down below your thoughts and yeah, like I said, guys, make sure you guys check out me on my platforms in the description below. Hit that join button to become a member of the channel. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started, guys. We're going to go ahead and get started. So let's, before we dive deep into it, let's go look at the lineups. I think we need to look at the lineups first and everything. And I'll tell you guys what my uh, concerns were about the lineup before the game. Because obviously I wasn't able to you know, go live before the game. So as you guys can see, this is the lineup from Real Madrid. We're going to start with Real Madrid 11. So they started Courtois, Camavinga. And then obviously it started Rudiger, Alaba, um, and Carvajal. Then Madra, Cruz, Valverde, Vinicius, Benzema, Rodrigo. So two things I wanted to make note here. Kamalvinga left back, I was like, ah, this may not be a great idea. Especially him going against like, you know, like the players like Grealish in particular. I thought he would struggle against Grealish in particular. And, you know, I, I didn't think he would have a great game. Then Tony Cruz. I was very surprised with Tony Cruz. He started today as DM, and I thought he had a great game, he, which I'll get into the uh, later. But I thought he was a fantastic in the midfield, controlling the midfield, controlling the pace, and given that Real Madrid that, you know, um, the sense of assuredness, you know, um, and I just thought that for me he was um, it was a very interesting to see him start. As for Manchester City, I mean, we they went with expect eleven at Ederson and goal Diaz, Walker, Akanji. And then obviously Rodri and Stones as the DMs, and then Gundogan and De Bruyne and the attacking mids, and then Silva and Grealish out wide and Holland up front. Um, I gotta say for City, the one thing I was a bit concerned though was how would Kyle Walker do in this game, and um, he had a good game, and I was kind of concerned. Uh, that was really my only concern with uh, City because I think they looked pretty good for most of the game. And now let's get to the actual game. Let's get to the actual game. So that first half, man, it was end to end. It was end to end. You could start to see how City was able to control the game at their own tempo. I thought Gundogan, for me, was really good on the day. He was driving forward, making those runs. I thought, for me, they were very good. And the thing with City is that they had all the possession. They had all the possession. They created the chance after chance. But the thing is, they just weren't clinical enough. And my thing with Manchester City is that, yes, say what you will. They created chance after chance. There wasn't really any threatening, high-quality chance. There's not, like, a huge save... Courtois had to make in that first half like I can't remember a huge save like a huge huge big save because the saves he did make were comfortable catches it was just catches for him and that's what I'm saying is that for me that was a great game plan and for Manchester they were going great and I gotta say defensively they looked very good because at the times that Real Madrid did counter you could see how Manchester kind of looked a bit vulnerable defensively you know, I'm looking at Rodri in particular. Yes, he had a good game, but he made some mistakes in here and there. And City, Real Madrid, sorry, uh, yeah, Real Madrid almost capitalized upon. I remember Diaz had to go out of position to make that huge tackle, uh, sorry, huge block that probably would have led to Benzema scoring an easy tap in. You know, um, and I'm also looking at Kanji also made a good block as well. And now let's talk about Vinicius goal. Vinicius goal. This is what I love about the Champions League guys and these kind of crucial games. It's about. It's not about. It's not about scoring against scoring the league. It's about getting it done. And you can see with Vinicius. This is why I say, guys, that Vinicius for me is a fantastic player. I think he's an amazing player for Real Madrid. I think Barca fans should give him more praise because what he did was amazing. Scoring that goal and the outside the range was spectacular. Because for me, guys, he was fantastic. He was driving forward. He was probably Real Madrid's best attacking player. And all the threat that Real Madrid carried in the attack was through his side. And you could see how imaginative he was. You know, scoring that goal out of nowhere. You know, and it's just for me that big game credentials, man. That's why I love Vinicius because he's been able to show up in these big games. You know, show up against Liverpool, show up against Chelsea, um, and now show up against Manchester City. Like, he's that guy, man. He is that guy that Real Madrid can look up into and say, hey, you know, things aren't going great. Can you deliver in a huge stage like this in the Champions League semifinal at the home game? Fantastic goal. Came against the run of play. Brilliant there. Kamavinga there. What an insane player he is. I, I think Kamavinga for me is a, a very, a very amazing player. The guy is like 20 years old and he's been fantastic. He's versatile. He can play at the lot back position. Fantastic game from Kamavinga. Making that driving run there. Giving that assist there for Vinicius. And I just think that for Real Madrid, man, you could see how 
that uh, Manchester City just took them off guard. Like, I think Manchester City didn't expect that. And especially being that so late in the first half, it was going to be interesting to see how Real Madrid was... Manchester City were to respond, and rightfully they did in the second half. The second half, Real Madrid started actually pushing for it. Ederson had to come up clutch with some of those big saves. I remember that, um, you know, there were some big saves there that was made. And, you know, the thing is with KDB is that he had some early shots. In the second half, Courtois made a big, big save, you know, just before he scored. It was, I believe, offside, so it wouldn't have counted anyway. Uh, then De Bruyne, man, KDB, man, he turns up, man. You guys know I've always been, you guys know I'm not really been the biggest KDB fan. I've always been one to say that, eh, this guy isn't that amazing and everything. But today he showed up, man. He showed up, and he got a crucial goal because I said, I said in my preview that I said before the game that he needed to show up. You know, this is the type of game he needs to show up, at, especially away in the Champions League, where things aren't going looking great. You know, and he showed up, man. Absolutely fantastic goal. And from that point on, man, Real Madrid kept pushing, they kept pushing, they kept pushing. And it felt like Manchester City were kind of content with that second, with that equalizer. It kind of felt like, okay, you know what, we'll just accept the equalizer, we'll just accept the draw. And I just feel like for Real Madrid, they were just going for it, going for it. Ederson, as I said, had to make some big saves on Karim Benzema, made a big save on right at the end there. Um, and yeah, just think of for Real Madrid, is just that um, Ederson in particular came up clutch. And so... For Real Madrid, I think if you're a Real Madrid fan, you should be disappointed with this. You should be disappointed because the thing is that this is a draw, you know. And for Manchester City, they're going to be content with this result. They're going to be content with this result because of how how, how they didn't really play the best in the second half. And you could probably tell it was kind of a game of two halves in some way. Like, I think Manchester City dominated the first half and Real Madrid dominated the second half. Um, and, it, and the goals kind of, became, kind of came against the moment, um, run of play in both halves respectively. And I just think that for Manchester City, they're, they're, they're going to be the more happier of the two teams. Because, like I said, they got a draw away, and now they just have to go at home. And while it will be difficult, they are the favorites to advance the Champions League final, especially with the home field and their advantage and everything. And they haven't lost a Champions League home match since 2019. So, for Real Madrid, they have to do the impossible. But we all know Real Madrid is that team. You know, if there's any team to bet against, it would it, you wouldn't bet against Real Madrid. They just have that football heritage. And so, like I said, for Real Madrid, they're definitely going to be, they're definitely still in the driving seat. It's only a draw, you know. But, like I said, the thing is for Manchester City is that, you know, how, because the thing is, this wasn't even peak Manchester City. This is even the best we can see. You could, you would imagine that in the Etihad, Manchester City would raise the level, even even more dominating the second leg, considering how this is their home stadium and everything, and they'll put up. And I got to give credit to Manchester City, because they, they could have easily walked away with this game from a 1-0 defeat. But the fact that they managed to push on, kept pushing and pushing, even when they were not playing so great in the second half, just shows how committed they are to try to, um, you know, get back in this game. And as I said, man, it was kind of a game of two halves, in my opinion. You know, looking at the halves respectively here, you guys can see right here, Real Madrid had a higher XG, 0 0.65. And yeah, man, um, in the first half. And so, like I said, man, Real Madrid, man, they, they put up a good fight in the second half. But for me, it's just that first half was so bad from Real Madrid. I think if you're a Real Madrid fan, you 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 really you should be concerned how easy it was for Manchester City to dominate you in the first half, you know? And for like I said, for Manchester City, man, why was no subs made? That's another question I want to ask Pep because he should have brought an Alvarez and Foden. Now, on, I want to talk about specific players in the day. Specific players. So, players I thought played well. We're going to we're gonna talk about... I'm not going to talk about every single one, but I'm going to talk about the three best players for each team and the three worst players. Let's start with Real Madrid. Obviously, the man in the match has to be Vinicius. Vinicius, and Kamavinga, Tony Cruz. At, those are probably the three standout players for me, at least. For Manchester City, I would probably say De Bruyne, of course. Gundogan, I would say. And I would probably say... I would maybe say Jack Grealish. I'll say Jack Grealish. I think those three had a fantastic game in the, the team they were cutting through. Grealish, for me, had a great... Um, he was making those crosses to the box. You can see how much he was trying on the day. He was particularly great. Worst performances, man. Real Madrid, I, I'm sorry to say this, Benzema was terrible. I wasn't impressed with Benzema. Now, the thing is, Benzema didn't really... He just wasn't getting in the game, man. I, I don't know what's up with Karim Benzema because this was a terrible performance from him. You know, I still respect Benzema. I still think he's a great player. But you could tell that this season, he's just not been the same as last season. You know, he just doesn't have that same kind of hunger and same kind of motivation, passion. And you can see how much he put everything for that Champions League last season. You know, so, like I said, he still can turn up. Like, we saw in the second leg, last, the first leg last season, that he scored two goals, one penalty, and one fantastic goal in that, at the Etihad. So, it is possible. But like I said, 
just wasn't great on the day. And then obviously another performance I thought wasn't particularly great was Modric. I thought Modric had a very disappointing game. You know, I didn't think he was that amazing on the day. Now, it wasn't to say he was terrible, terrible. Of course not. I, I don't think it was that bad. But I just don't think he was as impactful. I thought for me he was just about as average, I would say. This was probably under this is probably underwhelming performance for his caliber. We know the type of player he is. I thought for me, man, I would say Carver Hell. I don't think Carver had a great game whatsoever. I thought he was really, really poor for most of the game. Not very good, you know, and I just thought for me, he just didn't really look great on the day for Real Madrid, everything. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, um, there is some controversy over the Man City goal. Should that goal have stood? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But anyways, getting back to the Manchester City thing. Um, for me, the players are underperformed for me, Holland. Holland underperformed. Okay, Holland for me did not play well in this game. And the thing with Holland... Manchester City is that they're so good. They don't even need Holland to have a fantastic game. They could even do this without him. And you could see, you saw how they didn't really need him per se to you know have a fantastic game. They were still able to play very well, if not you know. And the thing is like with Holland, man, is that I'm looking at the second leg in particular. Should Pep actually bring Alvarez? Because this might be a controversial take here. I might get a lot of stick for saying this. However, I would actually start Alvarez in second leg and bring Holland off the bench because I feel like Alvarez for me is more dynamic, and I feel like. He could give you that G goal in a huge game. See, the thing is, like, there's a difference between league games and a knockout game. League game, Holland is perfect. I think in perfect, I would love to have an elite game. But in the knockout stage is where it comes down. You know, you have to you have to find ways to get it done when it's not playing particularly well. And I just don't really know if Holland is that guy in the knockout stage. You know, yes, I know he scored against Bayern. I know he scored against Leipzig. But we all have seen the guys that this season, Bayern and Leipzig, have been very, very disappointing for their. They haven't been the great this season. This has been a very off season for both clubs in particular. So I, I just feel as though it'll be interesting to see what he does in the second leg because, like I said, man, he he has to score in that yard. I would imagine. So you know, like I said, Pep will probably not bench Holland anyway. He'll probably still, um, and no, sorry, he will probably start him anyway, regardless of what I think. But I'm just saying is that if I was Pep, I would honestly contemplate it. Another player that I didn't really think had a great game in particular for me for Manchester City was Bernardo Silva. I thought he was very, very disappointed. I didn't think he was great whatsoever. He didn't really do much in the game at all, in my opinion. Um, and, yeah, so I thought he was pretty, pretty disappointing. Um, that obviously, uh, Rodri, I would kind of say also was a bit disappointing because he did make some mistakes. And, like I said, Real Madrid honestly could have capitalized upon the mistakes he made. Now, it wasn't to say he had a bad game. Of course not. But I think he was one of the more underwhelming. Like, he could have done better. You know, avoid making those kind of mistakes. Because, like I said, guys, you know, you make those kind of mistakes, you're going to get punished for it. So, for Real Madrid, like I said, guys, the tie is open. It's one apiece for both teams. And, like I said, guys, I just feel as so though for Manchester City, they are the driving favorites. They are the favorites to advance and everything. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoy this comprehensive review. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below if I missed any major talking points this game because I probably did. And like I said, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live reaction to both Champions League games. We'll discuss about the Milan Derby in that one as well. And it should be very exciting, guys. So like I said, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like I said, if you made it this far, please consider that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Comment below your thoughts, comment below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.